from the mind of Mark Yoshimoto Nemkov. So right now you're listening to the Putnam 251E on the LX. And here it is on the DLX. And Dave Camille left a very interesting comment. He says that UA say they're running the Putnam and Oceanway collections on the LX is possible. Remove my air quotes out here. But not advised since they were done for the DLX L22. Now, I have to tell you that uh, possible but not advised. <laughs> What what is that? All right, so they are, they're discouraging you from getting it, right? So why? Why are they discouraging you? Possible but not advised. So I guess it comes down to what they perceive as the uh, quality difference between the two. So again, this is the 251, the Putnam BP251E on the LX. And here it is on the DLX. And again, uh, you... you you know that the 251 is a microphone that has a smaller head basket. It, you know, when you look at pictures of it, it looks large. You think it's really like the kind of the size of a 47, but it's not. It's a skinnier microphone. And, oh, wrong one. And uh, so uh, overall, right, you are, you're getting the same resonance issue. I, I don't want to call it an issue. Let's maybe a feature. You're getting, you're getting the roomier head basket sound on the DLX slash L22. Now, let's, uh, let's move on to another. I'm going to do some copy. So here's the 251A, which uh, I'm not a, uh, I, I don't like as much as the 251E. Um, it's a different 251. But here it is on the, on the DLX. And I think on the, on the, on the DLX slash L22, it compared to over here. I mean, you hear it much drier sounding, of course. And I mean, if I want more room, I can get back here. So if I, hold on. So if I push this back a little bit more, right, am I getting, I'm, I'm still, I'm not getting as much. I, you feel a little bit more room, right, I'm, if I'm on top of it. But right here, even if I'm on top of this, right, proximity affected, you still hear that resonance that, um, that we've identified. So, um, but let's go to the big boy. Let's go to the 47. So this is the Bill Putnam 47. And the 47 is always going to be the flagship model of any modeling collection because everybody wants a 47 and nobody can get one unless you want to spend fifteen to twenty thousand dollars which i don't think most of us want to do i honestly don't think anybody wants to do that so unless you're some rich dentist oh hold on this is the 47 my bad so hold on so this is the putnam 47 on the dlx and here's the Putnam 47 on the LX. And again, I mean, the head basket makes a big difference. So on a 47, right, I think a part of the 47 sound is this, um, is this sense of roominess around the capture. You know, 47 is, is really a very musical microphone. And I think this kind of thing, this, this feel of, of a roominess to it um, is very beneficial to the 47 sound. Now, a lot of microphones have tried to copy the 47 sound by using a 47 style capsule, which is low mid focused. And a lot of times, especially with FET mics doing the 47 thing in smaller head baskets, you get a 47 ish tone, but not really uh, something that I would say you could put up against a, a 47 and, and feel like it's in the same uh, in the same realm. I mean, this feels 47 ish. But if you want a 47 sound, I think you really need to have the larger head basket. I think that is absolutely part of the 47 sound. So again, you know, I think that the, the sphere was originally designed and they looked at it and they said, and obviously when you're designing a new product, the larger you make that product, the more expensive it is to manufacture, more heavier, uh, larger, more materials used. Um, so, I mean, I'm sure that, that, they they probably they wanted to make it as efficiently as possible but to copy that 47 sound and that's why the 47 is generally the first microphone that comes up in the collection that that's the most desirable uh model so the 47 sound right obviously very different between the two now let's go to the 67 so this is the putnam 67 right 67 has a smaller form factor even though it has a different shape head basket it's still a smaller head basket and here's the 67 on the uh, dlx 
And you can hear, you can actually hear, this I think is a, is a really big difference between these two. Because to me, the 67 would be the, the model here that I'd be more likely to use for voiceover. And I think this drier sound on it, um, also it feels a little bit fuller. Because here you, you, you almost hear uh, like, like a hollowed out middle on it. I mean, it's, it's very obvious. It's, it's like someone shot a hole through it. Um, and you're getting that 67-ish tone, but really in the upper mids. But there's something missing, like really in the juncture between the, the upper mids and the lower mids. Kind of, I think, right around, uh, uh, I want to say it's between uh, 800 and 1.1-ish. And 1 .1 -ish. Um, that's, I'm just, I'm just kind of, I'm spitballing it here. I'm not sure, but you could, it feels, it feels hollower than this. So, um, as we are primarily talking about voiceover on this channel, since that's really our primary, uh, uh motivation, um, over music, at least on this channel, at least for, for me and, and really my, my intentions. So, um, I'm going to read some copy, uh, through this on the 67 and I'll go back and I'll do it on the, uh. On, on a couple other mics. So here we go. So LX first. Tired of that pinky toe? <laughs> Sorry. Ah. Tired of that pinky toe? That ugly little blob at the end of your foot? The toe most people consider to be the worst tasting one? <laughs> it's time to get rid of nature's curse. At pinky toe be gone. This month, we can remove a pinky toe in seconds for just $99 using our patented semi-painless toe guillotine. Stop into PTBG today and say, pinky toe be gone. Ah, not a real commercial. All right, pinky toe be gone. Okay, tired of that pinky toe? That ugly... L <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Hmm, be a pro. Okay, tired of that pinky toe? That ugly little blob at the end of your foot. The toe most people consider to be the worst tasting one. <laughs> it's time to get rid of nature's curse and pinky toe be gone. This month, we can remove a pinky toe in seconds for just $99 using our patented semi-painless toe guillotine. Stop in a PTBG today and say pinky toe be gone. That was a better read. But um, yeah, you can, you can absolutely hear. Uh, it's, it is. It's like someone, someone carved a donut in in the in the mids um and so overall i mean y y there is a difference between them and i think you you cannot tell me that the 67 sound on the dlx slash l22 is better for voiceover than this sound um you know let's go back to the 47 real quick so this is the 47 on the lx and uh here, we'll read the copy through it. Tired of that pinky toe? That ugly little blob at the end of your foot. The toe most people consider to be the worst tasting one? It's time to get rid of nature's curse and pinky toe be gone. This month, we can remove a pinky toe in seconds for just $99 using our patented semi-painless toe guillotine. Stop in a PTBG today and say pinky toe be gone. <laughs> Sorry. Laughing at my own joke. Okay, here we go. Tired of that pinky toe? That ugly little blob at the end of your foot? The toe most people consider to be the worst tasting one? It's time to get rid of nature's curse and pinky toe be gone. This month, we can remove a pinky toe in seconds for just $99 using our patented semi-painless toe guillotine. Stop in a PTBG today and say pinky toe be gone. All right, so overall, um, we got a couple of more models here, but I think that we have kind of demonstrated uh, hold on. What happened? Oh no, I'm looking, sorry. I'm looking at the wrong window. I thought, I thought I had a different collection here. Um, but overall, I think we're, we're really talking about the fact that these are two different microphones. These are definitely two, um, and they should be treated as such. And I'm not saying you need both of them. That would be ridiculous. Um, so here's the, the 12, right? The BP 12. Uh, model of a C12, which is the precursor to the 414. So the 12 on here, now the 12 is really a, a smaller microphone, but I mean, I think this evokes really that largeness of a 12. Let's go to the LX. 
And here's the 12 on the LX. And I think that the 12 on the LX, in comparison, really, there's, there's, there is not as much a vibe going on. Um, so uh, I'm not really, I don't, this isn't the microphone I would use for voiceover, per se. I mean, there's a lot of low end on it. I think this is, this is absolutely, to me, a, a microphone that you use um, for music. And I would back off it a lot more. So again, here it is on the LX. And here it is on the DLX. So um, big difference. So DLX. And here it is on the LX. Hold on. You know what? Let me just double check something. This doesn't sound right. Um, no, I, everything's on. I thought that maybe something was, wasn't, uh, wasn't switched back on. Um, but yeah. So, I mean, you can hear a big difference again. Here's the 12 on the LX. And here's the 12 on the DLX. Now let's go to the last a large diaphragm condenser here. And this is a 37. And a 37 is not anything I would ever use for voiceover, in, unless, at least on myself. So uh, here's the 37 on the DLX. And, oh, and here's the 37 on the uh, LX. So 37 on the LX, 37 on the DLX. So the 37 to me um, is really, you know, 37 is more 87-ish than it is 47-ish. So uh, does it benefit from the smaller head basket? Um, maybe. So I think that, again, uh, the, the boominess, the resonance here um, is counterproductive for using this for voiceover. I mean, this could be good with a blend. And I don't want to get into blends today because we've already gone on real long. But overall, so can you use the Putnam Collection on the LX successfully? Yes, you can. Because you know what? Not all the microphones, not the entire, you only get six large diaphragm condensers with the Putnam. And you get, uh, you know, either way, wh which way you go, LX, DLX, you only get six. Here, I'm going to go back to the 47. So the 47 here, I think, is the gem. Um, I think the 67 does not sound as great. I think the 12 sounds better here. I think the 251, um, maybe a toss up, um, depending upon what you're using it for. Here I am going back to the 47, but here I'm going to go, I'm actually going to go to the 67 because I think the 67 sounds way better on the Putnam, but I want to know what you think. So I think that Universal Audio saying that you, you shouldn't use the Putnam or Oceanway collections on the LX, um, I don't know where that comes from because, you know, honestly, again, you know, I know a lot of people out there, uh, they are, they are, um, overly concerned i think in my opinion uh they are overly concerned with does it sound like the real thing and it's not does it sound like the real thing it's how does it sound within the context of what you do uh you know don't get don't get hung up on over on uh, does this sound like a real 67 because ultimately really um again this is the 47 ultimately really the people listening to whatever it is you're doing whether it's music or voiceover there, I don't think there's ever a time that someone hears your voiceover and goes, oh, is that a, is that a real 87 or is that a 87 clone? Was that a sphere or was that a real 47? I guarantee you nobody cares. As long as you pull off what it is that you're doing and do it well, nobody cares what tools you're using. So use the tools that sound best for you. And whether that's a sphere or the real thing or something else or something you build, it doesn't matter. Just sound great. All right. Or as we like to say on this channel, suck less more often. So again, here's the 67 on the LX, uh, my desired uh, choice out of this collection. Here's the 67 on the DLX. And again, here's the 47, which I think sounds better on here than the LX. But I want to know what you're thinking. So let me know, Nation, because, you know, this is an interesting experiment. And we're going to do the same thing with Ocean Way. Uh, and um, I'm really, I really, I'm really kind of, I'm, you know, I, I don't know which one's better. And I don't think there's a wrong answer. But I want to know what you think. So uh, it's like the third time I've said that. So anyway, and don't forget, there's the Discord server. So if you want to have conversations, and this has been fantastic. People are having conversations with each other about gear, about voiceover. Um, I'm giving, you know, I'm, I'm going to use it to give small updates about the pilot and stuff. So go check out the Discord server at the link in the show notes. And, um, you know, again, let's all suck less more often. <laughs> so, 
Uh, yeah. Until next time, this is Mark Yoshimoto Nemkov, Fading to Black.